Good. <clears throat> well, I think this is a uh, big week for us. I mean, I know there's a lot of other things that people want to talk about, but for us, the reality is this is the truest camp week we can have. So <clears throat> the challenge is for us is, uh, as a program to no matter what it is that's going on, no matter when our first game is, whatever that is, that this is the week where we have to make sure that um, the things that we've done out here the last three years are the things we do this week. And so that's a challenge. That's a challenge with a lot of, you know, unknown still out there in the air for our kids. Um, but if you were there this morning, you were there at the team meeting, you were there probably individual in practice. Uh, hopefully there's a different feel. There's a feel of, you know, this is the ne necessary thing uh, to preparing yourself to win a championship. And we've got to grind through this week. We've got to really push. We'll use all day, the whole day. We'll use all night with, with some of our meetings and, and walkthroughs and special team stuff that we're really going to grind it this week and challenge our guys no matter what it is that's going on that we're prepared um, <clears throat> really when our camp ends and it's, uh, and it's right around the corner. So I felt a different <clears throat> bit of energy. We, we had a good Saturday night scrimmage, um, but I felt a different bit of en energy and attention uh, to detail um, that was good. And I think our guys actually need it. I think it helps them when coaches are kind of the way they are. I, I, I went back to being the, the, the kind of the pain in the rear that I can normally be um, with the little things and the attention to detail. And I think it kind of maybe takes their minds off of all the other things and really focusing into doing the things we need to do to put ourselves in a place to win a championship. I don't hear anything. You're not on mute, but I don't hear you. Is it the computer not turned up? Ah, there you go. Got me. Got you now. I thought you were just. I thought you were just. Great, great, really worded question, Coach. I thought you wanted me to read your lips. This one might not sound as impressive. Uh, everything you just laid out. Does does your schedule change at all? Maybe after camp, obviously because of the first game being pushed back. Yeah, we don't really know exactly what that schedule is. You know, you can ask a lot of coaches, you can call around. I don't know that there's any precedent to saying, hey, you get done with camp and you play in three weeks or four weeks. I, you know, so the, the schedule will completely change. There's some parameters and some things that we got to figure out when we get back to campus. <clears throat> we'll do that. Um, we'll be smart. I think our whole focus when we came out here was, hey, this is 18 days, no matter whether it's 18 days or, you know, seven days or eight days before your first game, or if you have those 18 days, then you have off. You know, the SEC just goes to camp now based on when they play their first game. I don't think it matters. All that matters is do you do the work, you know, in this time to prepare yourself. The next however many weeks when we go back to campus will be very much modified uh, until we get about eight to ten days out. Coach, the first scrimmage is always you know, kind of a big deal. How did you come out of Saturday? 130 plays or so, uh, we had a, uh, a twisted ankle, a, uh, maybe a bang in the back, and maybe a little hand uh, you know, issue of any sort. So in that way, we, uh, I think we came out really well. Um, but I, I, I love the competition. We went ones on ones. The ones were more thud. Uh, everybody else, twos and threes, were live. So live situations for about 80-some 80, 80 plays. Um, a lot of really good things, you know, I think. Um, the really positive things were that it was a competition level. I think there were some big plays made by some young guys, uh, a lot in those twos and those threes, just seeing guys make plays, um, wideouts in particular, running backs. Uh, I think that um, you saw the speed of the game with some of those young guys for the first time with the coaches really off the field in a live situation that uh, you have to go through, that uh, you know they're wide-eyed and they're out there by themselves with not an upperclassman of any sorts to help them out a little bit. I think defensively, um, that was the one thing that showed. You know, there were some guys running. We had three linebackers that were all freshmen running with the twos, and nobody to kind of, you know, calm it and make a call and get things set. They had to do it all on their own, and I think they got some incredible learning experiences. Uh, but all in all, it was a back and forth. It was a really, really good, good night for us. You mentioned bumps and bruises, like COVID and contact mm -hmm. tracing and all that stuff aside. How has the health been for the team so far out there? It's been pretty good. That's what I mean. We won 130 plays and had a twisted ankle and a, um, you know, a guy got knee in the back and a guy, you know, we thought maybe fractured a bone in his hand or something, but no, sprained a wrist. So 
uh, with that being said, you know, going live with 85, 90 plays um, and only having that, it's been pretty good. You know, we've had some guys that have been missing, and this week we got a lot of guys back. So, um, you know, I think that if Coach Freeman always makes fun of it. The receiver core from the start of camp to now uh, looks like an NFL roster because they keep bringing in new guys. And guys were out, they were in quarantine, or they were here, or they were there <laughs> each and every day. It's all of a sudden now. Now they're back to that 16 number that we thought we'd come in with. And uh, I think they're a little bit more at full strength. So it uh, gives us some more wheels out there, that's for sure. You normally had a weird scoring system that you don't like to divulge <laughs> in your workings of. Did you have a winner for them? No, we, we didn't do a scoring system. We, we may do it uh, with our last scrimmage. Um, it's hard to do the scoring system when you're not live. So, you know, just where we are with what everything, with the ones that we've got and, and um, kind of the, the, you know, the, the amount of plays and games they've already played in, we w didn't want to go live. So it gets a little bit difficult to really score things when, you go, when you're going thudded up. And uh, in that way, it gets a little competitive and then guys start tackling. And, you know, you just can't have any confusion on whether it's live or not. So. We'll keep battling. We'll, we'll see if uh, this last one is a, is a scored one. Um, but I, I can tell you that uh, I thought the ones on both sides did a really good job. I thought the twos of the offense and twos and, and threes of the offense made a lot more big plays. And I would say maybe they came away with a, a little bit more of what they would like to say, a, more bags than the, uh, than the defense had uh, negative yardage plays. Do you want to go ahead with their question? Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks, Coach, for doing this. I'm, I'm interested in, um, you know, there's going to be some eligibility questions mm -hmm. answered, hopefully, this week. Um, I'm wondering, it sounds like there might be a push to just giving every fall athlete another year, um, regardless of if they play this year. Right. Um, I'm wondering what your thoughts on what would be best and what kind of modifications to scholarship limits might be needed to make that work. Uh, I don't know how much thought you've had a chance to give this, Luke, but like, what, what, what do you think would be the best thing for you going forward and your team? Well, I think that's – when you usually ask these coaches, they, they could have probably a general idea, but most of us are going to look at it and how does it affect us and our program. Um, I know this. If we had every guy that would come – was able to come back next year and did come back next year – we would have a really, really loaded group and, and some great leadership. Um, I had not heard all those things, whether they're going to offer it to everybody, whether the guys that don't play. Um, I think that that's probably going to be the best case scenario. I think that it's so hard because of um, the uncertainties when these guys' heads and, you know, well, you can play four games and you could still possibly get it. You don't know if you're going to play a full season. Will you play, you know, so to speak, we play a full season and you, you still miss two games in there. So maybe you play eight, you know. So I, I think it'll work itself out. I think the bigger thing is going to be is, you know, how does everybody say that it's, it's fair around the country when one team has, you know, 22 seniors that come back and one team has eight seniors that come back. I don't know that there's going to be any one way that's going to be fair. I think that we got to do what's best for the student athlete. Uh, there's a lot of student athletes that aren't going to want to come back for a sixth year or a fifth year if they've already exhausted, you know, their, so to speak, normal eligibility and have graduated. <clears throat> I mean, that's just a reality. You know, there's a lot of things about football that are great that guys can move on with their life after their four or five years of college. They don't get strung out in some minor leagues and continue to search for something that probably is never going to be there when you've got to just take that next step. So I think it'll work itself out. I think if we give the opportunity to these uh, – Young men, that's the best thing we can do, and everybody's got to use it for what's best for them because the next most difficult thing is going to come is when you start to play and maybe you do miss a game or two and you have that senior that's thinking, man, I would really like to have another year. I'm going to sit out now. He's not opting out because he's, you know, because of maybe conditions or things like that. They're opting out because it might be the best opportunity for them. And now it makes it even more difficult the – you know, the, 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 the message throughout college football, if you start seeing those guys do that, it might be taken in a negative way, like people are starting to get nervous late in the year when the reality is everybody may be doing it for different reasons. So to keep it on a level playing field, I think you probably have to give it um, the option to everybody. And then each and every program, I mean, it's not going to be exactly fair across the country. 
You know, some people are going to end up with 95 or 100 scholarships in one year, but I think it's it could possibly be the best opportunity for for the student athlete in general. Thanks, Luke. Sure. Uh, I, I would say a lot of people had no idea who he was, and maybe even when he first came to campus, he was quarantined for a while, so that was even another you know, 10, 12 days that nobody knew who he was. Um, were you out there again today? Because I think he made about eight catches again today. I, I don't know. I, I'd like to tell you I knew a lot more. We knew him coming out of high school. Um, Coach Goodooley did a great job of staying in contact with him, and, and uh, I think he had a good idea of what it is that he wanted, and there was an opportunity here that – um, he keeps doing what he does. He's, he's going to earn everything that he's going to get. And, uh, yeah, he has. He, he's shown up. He's, he's made plays. Um, you know, and, and it hasn't just been with the threes. It's been with the twos. I think he's going to see himself maybe trying to get a few more opportunities and see how he does over there, maybe in the boundary against number 12, just to maybe take one of those next steps and, and make another challenge. Did you make him run the 40 in his pajamas? <laughs> no, I, I don't, I'm not sure these guys, you, you're dating yourself. If we, told, if we called him Willie Mays Hayes, I'm not sure there's a whole lot of guys that would remember Willie Mays Hayes and, and uh, how he had to go about to make that Cleveland Indian crew. Um, but uh, it, it is a little bit of a similar story maybe. Uh, the guy coming from out of nowhere, you know, is going to have to earn it. But uh, he has been a really pleasant surprise so far and a great attitude as well. I mean, I don't think it's going to change it for what it's been the last five months. <clears throat> the reality is I don't think a lot of kids are going to get on campus. I think the guys are, that haven't committed are going to start to realize that, you know, what we were telling them four months ago probably was the truth, meaning you might as, you're going to have to try to find a way to make a decision, you know, without maybe truly setting a whole lot of, spending a whole lot of time on people's campuses. And um, so I think they're going to have to continue to do those things. I think you're going to have to do a bunch of that stuff virtually. You don't know. I mean, is it going to open back up, you know, in the winter? Would they allow people to come on campus? I'm assuming no right now, so we're preparing uh, ourselves that way. Um, it's not as much different for the next class because they weren't, you know, you weren't spending a bunch of time with them. Most of your communications with those guys were via phone and, and you know, FaceTimes and things like that, which is what you're still doing. So. Um, I think it was a much bigger change there in those first three months than it's going to be even if it stays this way all of season. Coach, would you rather get a testing question or a quarterback competition question? <laughs> I'm not sure what testing you're talking about, but um, <laughs> okay. you can ask them both. I think it's gone really well. I think that the unique thing that if you guys aren't out here to watch is some people would say that there's a, there's a quarterback battle and then some people would come to practice and watch a guy run with the ones and a guy run with the twos and sometimes it's hard to judge guys based on who they're running with. Um, every, both those two have taken back and forth reps with the ones and the twos. So there's Desmond Ritter who's a two-year starter running half of the reps with the twos and um, he's done a great job. He's had an incredible attitude. Same with same with Ben. Um, so they have had a lot of opportunities on both sides. So it's still a great competition. I think that Des is uh, still showing, you know, his leadership, and, and I think he has actually taken another step forward. And just some of those off the field, you know, even when he's in there, um, abilities to lead. Uh, but but sometimes Ben, I mean, the, the, the dynamics that he can do with his arm, and you know, the the addition of a lot of those uh, wide receivers has, you know, has. It's been a good thing for him as well, but uh, I think it's challenged <clears throat> Des, uh, you know, in his ability to throw the ball and and, and uh, 
be better at all the things as well. So, I, I, again, we've got another really big week. I think we're going to continue to run those guys, both with the ones and the twos, um, and we'll see where it goes from there. I know this, you know, unlike every year you say, hey, we've got to make sure we've got at least two quarterbacks, you're going to need two to three quarterbacks this year just because the sheer fact of little things, whether they're injuries, whether they're, you know, COVID, whether they're contact tracing, um, I'm not just worried about one and two. I'm worried about who three is as well, and that's a big deal. So who's three? Uh -huh. I don't know just yet. There's still a battle. I think that uh, obviously Lindauer's done a good job. Evan Prater's done a really good job as well. And I think this next four, four and a half days is going to be a really um, big opportunity for both of those guys, you know. They're going to get a lot of reps. They're going to get some live reps. Saturday they got live reps, meaning their red jerseys were off and they were live back there um, to see how they would react and see how they would do if they had to pull it down and run. Um, and then those those three weeks or four weeks, whatever we've got back on campus, you know, it'll be a really big time for those three guys, um, those guys that really have to develop and can't kind of, you know, say, hey, we, we put our time in in those 18 days. We're ready for a season. We're ready for that first game. And, modify everything as we move forward. Those guys that are the threes, you know, they're going to have to say, hey, this is going to be another competition and ability to, you know, really prepare ourselves because at any moment, you know, whether it's the third quarterback or the third offensive tackle, um, we're probably going to need them. Because Evan was the highest rated recruit in program history and he's a local guy, what have been your, your impression, impressions of him to date? Well, he, he's done a great job. I think the, the thing that's unique about him is his acceptance around the whole entire program, and especially in that quarterback room. You know, those guys are so confident in who they are and what they do, meaning Ben and Dez. Um, they've taken him in like a little brother. So it hasn't been, you know, one of those things where you hear even in the NFL or something, the Green Bay Packers, just because they drafted a guy, all of a sudden they're worried about, you know, well, what's the relationship going to be like with these guys? You know, so he's been able to walk in. He's been able to be himself. He's been able to understand that, you know, he's got a ways to go, um, but he's also being helped along by that room. Um, so I think he's done a great job. I think he's done a great job kind of encompassing that whole, you know, group of fr freshman guys. Uh, you know, you'd say, oh, well, the quarterback's got to be the leader. Well, you hope that, but I also do see it. He's got that natural charisma. He's got a little bit of that personality that uh, by nature a lot of those guys flock to. And um, you're seeing him be able to be himself uh, – even though he may be a three, even though he may be as highly recruited and rated as he was, he's able to walk in here and just be one of the guys and be himself. Uh, Coach, I don't know how much information you can or want to give us about all the testing stuff, but at the very least, how do you feel about how the program has, has handled and, and managed all of this from, from that perspective? <clears throat> Well, I think first, my job is to make sure that we do our best right here. And if you haven't heard a bunch about different things coming out of our program, <clears throat> then I would say we've done a pretty good job. Because the last thing we want to do as a family is to have to air our stuff publicly when we can't handle things from within. So is it always a, you know, a constant uh, fluctuating situation? Yeah, there's a lot of things that continue to change. Um, but what I can say is I think our, not just our medical people, I think our coaches, our trainers, I think our players have done a phenomenal job at um, getting the information that they need to get and, and believing and trusting in the people that they need to believe and trust in. Um, is it perfect? No. Is it going to be a continued, um, you know, fluctuated situation where we've got to continue to not, you know, think that we've got it all under control and not think that nobody has any concerns or any questions? Um, but I think what we have done is, is a really, really good job from the time we started, and that's because of Dr. Devine and Bob and Aaron and Michelle and all that, those, uh, that group of people. But it doesn't just happen now. Everybody wants to say, well, your doctors and them doing a great job. Well, if our doctors and trainers didn't have a relationship with the people in our program, meaning our kids as well as our coaches, if they didn't have a trust and respect level before this thing started, it was going to be incredibly difficult even when they had it before, which is what we were so lucky to have. We had incredible you know, trust and respect amongst that group um, and with our players. 
that we've been able to handle it and manage it, um, but we know that we've got to continue to, to work at it. Uh, so with that being said, I think we've done a really good job. I think we're going to continue to you know, up the testing. Uh, I do believe our kids feel more comfortable um, being tested. Actually, I thought going into it would be the other way. I, I didn't want to be tested. I didn't want that thing shoved in the back of my head as much. But when I saw how it made our kids feel, a little bit more of the relief, um, just knowing what else is around us, I think it's, uh, I think it's gone well, and I think it's going to continue to ramp up, which is good. Any thoughts on the, the breakthrough with the saliva testing and, and how much less complicated that could make things uh, if it becomes mainstream? So until we started camp, I'd probably bugged and spent, you know, four or five hours a day uh, some way, somehow, keeping abreast of everything that was going on, whether it was being down in the doctor's office or with Bob and listening to the epidemiologists and all the different people on their talks and, and, and know exactly where we were from the time this thing started. Once camp started, um, I don't know that I've followed a lot of it. I get the information as best I can. I heard about the saliva testing, but I could not tell you one bit about it. Um, like I said, my job here, just like our kids is in this 18 days, is not to be ignorant from what else is changing and going on, um, but to make sure that you know, you're focused on the things you need to focus on. And hopefully when we break camp and we do have that time, um, I'll know a lot more, um, be you know, read up or, or even informed via our doctors so that if we go to that, I want to make sure I can explain it to our kids. Um, but as of now, I, don't, I couldn't tell you a whole lot about the saliva testing. <laughs> Well, all those young, I mean, don't get me wrong, Jay Sean uh, and Trey Tucker are pretty solid at the at kind of our slot spot. They have done a really good job. I, I know Jay Sean had one of those years last year that you just didn't hear a lot about him, didn't see a lot. I know he went through some ups and downs, not getting the ball. Um, he has really kind of turned it around. You know, what we thought of him as his freshman year, you know, last year probably was a little bit more of a struggle. Uh, but what an attitude uh, he's had. He's made some plays. Um, he's done a really good job along with Trey Tucker, who is dynamic in the return game and, and, and always going to be a threat as fast as he is. So those guys have done a great job. Alec Pierce has done a great job. Um, those are guys of names that people would know. Uh, and, and the new guys are, are starting to emerge. You know, I mean, they've, you know, Jordan Jones, who's the, the transfer, you know, missed a bunch of time. He didn't make the first five or six days uh, of camp. He's now been back, all of a sudden started to show up. Uh, Michael Young, who was in early, then was out a little bit as well, um, really has started to come back into things and show up. A very mature kid that uh, is sure-handed. And I'd be really curious to see how he handles these next four and a half days. Uh, those are two older guys that have done a really good job. And then it's hard, but, the, but those young kids are going to be really dynamic. Um, you know, and, and it's hard to say that they're ready to go, um, but Jaden Thompson and, and, and Tyler, um, who else is there? I mean, th those two guys. Scott. Uh, Scott, yeah, but he's been out. Um, oh, Tyler Scott, I know, but so Jaden and Tyler Scott have been two other guys. Tyler probably is playing a little bit behind Jay Sean and, and Trey, so he doesn't get as many opportunities. But I can tell you this, that it's one of those groups that you feel really good about the depth and the ability to develop those guys, um, you know, where you're not sitting there saying, oh, goodness, where's, where are we at in that receiver recruiting for the following year? You know, with our D-line, we've got four seniors. You're like, oh, boy, we've got to make sure that, you know, you're really those freshman guys and those guys you're recruiting. Um, so the best thing I can say about those guys is we feel really good about, A, where they are now, but also what their ceiling is in the development, um, not just for this year, but the following year as well. Coach, with the need for depth, uh, with the things you mentioned, whether it's you know the normal injuries or the COVID, especially the quarterback position, how would you assess the impact or influence that will have on redshirt decisions? Say that again, the impact that what will? Uh, the, needing the extra depth because of 
about COVID and, and contract tracing, how that might affect redshirt decisions more than usual. Well, the good thing about that redshirt decision is, you know, with those with those four games that you were allowed, I don't know if they're going to change, like give you more. They're talking about giving everybody a possibility. I, I don't know. I, I think that, you know, our mindset was always, hey, we want to be able to play the guys, even if it was an Evan Prater. If all of a sudden he had to have an opportunity, um, it'd be easy to play him for three games, and then you'd have to make that decision going into that fourth. Uh, so I think that that leeway, the rule they put in two years ago, gives you a lot of different opportunities that I don't think our philosophy has to change. We want to get everybody prepared, um, use them as we will. Uh, but then really start to make those decisions once you get into playing them two or three games. The harder decisions are those guys that may be running down on a special team. That, hey, he's a freshman, he's helping on a special team, but he's really a third, you know, safety. Is it worth it to, to burn his redshirt year? Well, no, let's keep him redshirted. But then all of a sudden somebody gets hurt, and now he's in with the two. So I think it's going to be flexible. I think it's going to be fluctuating, but I don't think because of the situation, it's going to have to change our philosophy. Um, it's nice to have those four games that you were always allowed uh, to be able to use with those guys. The big guys may be the one that's a little bit different. In light of that, this freshman class, obviously, highly heralded. Ratings wise, your number one class uh, in school history. How impressed have you been with the readiness of those guys to come in? Because I keep hearing a lot of freshmen names. Well, it's unique. They didn't get to come in like they normally would, you know, because of the situation. So when they did come in, you know, lifting is different. They don't have as much time in the, you know, with the, with the program and the team. But the thing they did get was some of that 20 hours a week where no other freshman class has ever got something like that. So their ability to be a little bit further along maybe football-wise, maybe not physically because, you know, sometimes those guys come in and, you know, that five, six, seven weeks in the summer gives them an opportunity physically to get in the shape to play the game the way it needs to be played. Uh, but it's given them an opportunity to get a lot more of the football sense. So I think that the, the athlete guys that <clears throat> the game isn't as physical for um, is why we're talking about the wide receivers, why we're talking about, you know, some of those linebackers um, because they've been able to have that opportunity to learn a little bit more with those 20 hours before we went to camp than they would normally. Thanks for hopping on. We'll get this recording set up as soon as possible. And thank the members of the officers.